You've seen the molding press being built. You've witnessed the first successful casting attempt. But is it up to the task of an actual production run as originally intended? Find out on today's episode of Scrap Attack. Greensandmachines.com It was a hot summer day when it was time to attempt the first production run of the soap dish. Now the whole basis of this molding press is to do a production run, and I conveniently found this ladle at a garage sale last year, which will be able to pour the perfect amount of metal into the mold so I don't have to lift the crucible out of the furnace. This gives the advantage of having the furnace running the entire time, but it's also a challenge to keep everything running smoothly. Now. When I started up the furnace, I accidentally leaked a bunch of oil out of the bottom of the furnace. So I decided, hey, I wonder what happens if I tried pouring this into the top of the furnace. And the resulting flares were pretty fun. I was getting my fireworks on before the 4th of July. There I was just adding some metal to the crucible. For some reason this time I kept missing the crucible and dropping the pieces in the bottom of the furnace. Then more flares, using the ladle. I made sure to clean the ladle before filling it with metal. Now interestingly enough, in a career survey I took in 8th grade, the number 2 most likely career for me was pyrotechnician. And I think number 1 was snowboard designer or something, but it's just funny how things turned out building a foundry. Yeah, by the time the ladle lit on fire, I had a feeling it was time to stop for a while and let it cool down. Anyways, time for the first pour. Getting a ladle full of aluminum, pouring it in the mold. Now you'll notice the biggest challenge when pouring into this mold is the fact that the pouring basin is so ridiculously small that it's impossible to maintain an adequate flow rate without spilling aluminum everywhere. And we'll get into that more later in the video. After some time for cooling, breaking open the mold and seeing what we got. Now I noticed one thing this time, I grossly overestimated the amount of time I needed to let this thing cool off before opening the mold. And another advantage is since it isn't all the way cool, it hasn't had enough time to shrink around the protruding half of the cavity, thereby making it easier to eject. But this time we didn't even fill the mold completely, but at least I was able to get the part out. So back into the crucible it goes. Now for pouring attempt number two. And attempt number two did exactly what I was afraid would happen. It stuck to the non-ejecting half of the mold. And I thought I was about to give up, but I said no. I opened up the mold and I was able to hammer it off amazingly and then get the mold back closed again. I think I spilled some metal on this one too. I think on one of them I spilled metal between where the, the mold opens and closes, so I had to pry that out. And we got us another incomplete soap dish. Round three. I also got some ingots out of this session with the leftover metal and the ladle. This time it did stick to the ejecting half, but another incomplete soap dish again. And I wasn't about to give up, I just kept doing it until I ran out of oil or was just ready to pass out from exhaustion. It's a foundry workout plan. This session definitely reminded me why foundry season is supposed to be in the winter. Oh, and more foundry flares while we're at it. I didn't even use up all that oil that was in the tray. Breaking open our fourth incomplete soap dish casting. None of them were filling today. Oh, and in this shot you can see the first time I tried the foundry flare, I, I poured way too much oil in the furnace and the resulting flare pushed me back 
and I accidentally spilled a bunch of hot oil on my pants. They're still stained like that even after going through the washing machine. And like I said, the fifth one I poured with the crucible, but by that time my arm was so tired that I couldn't even hold the crucible straight enough to pour the metal in it fully. So that one didn't fill up either. So here we have a shot of pouring attempts two through five because I put the first one back in the crucible. I think we casted more incomplete soap dishes today than the first few years of the attempts when I was first testing the mold. But I do have a plan to make this thing work. It involves making an extended pouring basin that bolts onto the outside of the mold and doing some milling on the pouring channel itself to make it flow more smoothly. And there's a shot of my safety glasses that were all disgustingly coated with sweat. Like you needed to see that. Any final words, Master Diecaster? Alright. Foundry season's over. Oh, don't listen. He'll be back at it in a few weeks. So, there's the play-by-play -play from this Foundry production session. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Diecaster D. On behalf of Greens and Machines, thank you for watching. And subscribe for more.